Now I heavily dislike the hiding of the number of dislikes for each video because I just find myself wondering if the video that I'm watching is high quality. And I'm well aware that there might be other folks out there who might be in a similar boat. So I'm doing everything that I can to make sure that your experience is more enjoyable when you're perusing through my own YouTube content. And everything that I'm doing in this video is using YouTube's API, so everything is by the book. Now, unfortunately, the folks who can run this script are folks who are actually the ones who are creating content, so it's very much heavily weighted on their decision to be as transparent as possible to their viewers. Although you might be able to run my scripts on someone else's video, YouTube has made it very much clear that they will be removing the dislike counter from its API. However, creators will still have access to their own video content and thereby they have access to the likes and dislikes. Given YouTube's stance on making sure that everyone's dislike counter is off, they did not mention anything regarding the creator sharing of those statistics. Now the very first step you want to make sure to do is to get your Google's developer's license on your own Gmail account and that's like perfectly free. All you really do is just log into the link right here and with which Gmail account and it should all be authenticated. Okay, so once you have your YouTube Google Developers console account, go ahead and create a separate project. In this case, I would just call mine YouTube and just follow those steps, um, the later steps when you do create your project. Next step is that you want to go to the API library, go ahead and type in uh, YouTube Data API version 3. Make sure that this is actually enabled on your given project. All right, enabled mine so you won't see that enable button. And then the next step you want to do is to go ahead and create your credentials. Uh, in this particular case, you want to get the OAuth client ID. This is going to be very much related to your own YouTube account. Um, and it's going to be like for more so for the private information. And so for the next step you want to do is to make sure that you're going to be adding a test user so you can make sure that this actually has access to your given project. Go ahead and type in one of your accounts that might have access to this uh, particular project. Um, and I already put in my given, like a different um, email to go ahead and test out this particular service. And lastly, go ahead and download that particular client. Uh, this will return a JSON file and we'll be using that JSON file for the rest of the code base to access this specific API. And in the following, each of these processes are gonna be pretty much like a step-by-step -step or a chunk-by-chunk -chunk bit of information. In the future, there'll be plans for streamlining all these processes together. So that's like one fell swoop motion, but I'm just gonna be breaking down this particular pipeline that I have. So let's go ahead and jump right into the code base. And before I even start, major shout out to M Coding YouTube. He really, really helped out with this coding base. Would have taken me a lot longer if his code was not publicly available. So major shout out to him, saved me a lot of time. So let's go ahead and dig right into this. So youtube.py, this is gonna be a helper library. Uh, to authenticate your given service in order to access a given API. Uh, probably the most important piece here is the client secret file. This is gonna be the JSON file that you have downloaded and it contains all of your um, project information in order for you to access the given API, which in this case is gonna be YouTube Data API version three. Um, so each of these are pretty much just hard-coded into a very specific scope and those scopes can be identified within Google's uh, description. So uh, these will individually be used in different functions and I'll go ahead uh, and I guess I point them out as we go on. Okay, so the very next step is to go to the download single video data just to demonstrate on how this is going to work on a more scalable process for all of your videos. So uh, I went ahead and just imported my get authenticated read only service. This is just going to be using this function over here. It's going to be using that particular scope. It's gonna be using that. And then we have some helper functions. Uh, we're gonna be, um, I guess, like dumping all of our information into a JSON format, which is totally fine. Um, and we're also gonna be downloading the uh, video videos associated data. So this is where the main part is gonna be in. We'll be passing in our client secret file. I uh, note that the config is also coming from app config over here. And it's just like a really simple class where you're just gonna be initializing with the location of where your secret file is and then what your channel ID is going to be. Um, so yeah, go ahead and do that and let's go back to download single video. 
we have it here we authenticate our service and then this is going to be the video id that i'll be reading in and just for laughs and yucks uh this is the video id that i'll be using what is a quant this is my second to well second most recent video i did so if you haven't checked out that video highly recommend that you check it out if you're interested in that particular field so i'll be using that and we'll be using this as an example uh, to look at whether or not we obtained our metadata correctly. So go ahead and do that. This could be um, using this to as a uh, like an address to save the data into this data folder over here. So let's go ahead and run that. So it should be Python download single video data. And then notice that this is going to be requiring an authorization code. So all you had to do, you had to copy this into a URL, which I am doing right now. Uh, and in the steps that I'm just flashing up on the screen, those are the general steps that you want to follow in order to verify that uh, Google knows that it is you. And then go ahead and copy that authorization code over here. And I just uh, blanked that out so you don't really see it. Um, but yeah, just ran that on over. Let's go ahead and clear this terminal here. and voila we have our data here so let's go ahead and take a look at that let's format that and what is a quant what do quants do and so forth so on and so forth so it has all the necessary information uh, that we would want to have and the most important piece of information that i want is going to be related to the description this is probably the most important piece id that's also a really important part but this is probably the most important part because we're going to be updating our description with the likes and dislikes ratio so uh, this is just an example of the single JSON file. So let's go ahead and go to the multiple uh, files over here. So that was just a test case. And then we're actually going to be using this uh, to get all the information from all of our videos. Similar concept. Uh, we're just going to be passing in our secrets file. We want to authenticate that with read only. Uh, and then in this case, we're going to be getting a list of all of our uh, IDs. And this function is coming from here. We're just going to get from... Um, all of your video IDs and it's going to be like, you know, chunking that through uh, just for an iteration process. So pass that into here, download playlist video snippets. It's going to be here, it's going to be iterating through, or in this case, um, it's going to be paginating uh, so that we don't have to keep on requesting over and over. So it just does that for us. And that is also in the YouTube um, file over here where you can take a look at that. Um, so it does that for you. And so we're going to be getting all the metadata associated with all of our given videos. So let's go ahead and run that. So same thing, Python, and let's um, exit out some of these over here. So you see that. So it's going to be Python. We want to download my uploads over here. Real simple event, same thing. Go ahead and copy and paste that link into a URL. You want to verify who you are. Uh, make sure you do that. And no Note that when you combine all of these elements together, uh, you can go ahead and only do this once. You don't have to do this repeatedly, um, but just you know, just make sure that you are who you say you are. Um, so notice that when, when I press enter on the off screen, we have all of the data now. We have all of our data related to all of our uh, YouTube videos. So, and notice that whenever uh, we have more than 50 objects. It just um, does the overflow to the next file and it iterates that through. So if you have like a thousand videos, you should be expecting 20 or so JSON, um, JSON files. And each of these files contains the exact same thing, but it's all in uh, a very nice JSON format. So we have description. This is what it was going to be uh, for all of our old descriptions. So that's what we want. And notice that I already did this for a test trial phase over here. And that's what the final results are going to be looking like. Well, we need to figure out how to get our likes and dislikes because obviously we don't know where they are located here. So I had to do this in a separate uh, Python script. So that is like more understandable when we're like, you know, chunk sizing it. Um, so let's go ahead and go to like and dislike the Python file up here. Let's exit out the JSON. Uh, files and pretty much the exact same logic um, almost you know, we're gonna be passing in our secret file and our channel ID as well we will be authenticating our service also notice I'm using a different service I'm using the scope of force SSL service um, going ahead and you're know, just pulling all of my video content from my uh, channel and gain those YouTube IDs uh, use those YouTube IDs to double check on the number of likes and dislikes and correlate that with that YouTube 
ID. I'm going to be printing out the video name, video ID, and the number of likes and dislikes associated with that video. And last but not least, I'm going to be writing all of this information into a video statistics.csv file. And so let's go ahead and run that. It's going to be Python like and dislike run that. Uh, we get a authentication notice. Let's go ahead and run that. And I went ahead and ran that and noticed that my print statements are outputting over here and notice that I have about 77 videos. I'm not trying to show my ID up here, but yeah, as you can see, all of the video names are associated with, you know, that video number, and this is sorted by the date. Um, also video ID, as well as the like, dislike, and the number of, well, it's actually the ratio. So total number of likes divided by total number of likes plus number of dislikes, and that is that percentage here. Uh, so let's go ahead and look at that in a more steady format. Um, that is, that's our CSV file. Let's go ahead and open that in Excel. And this is our, or my Excel file over here. I've got my video names, video IDs, likes, dislikes, and then the ratio. It defaults by 100 if you divide by zero. Uh, so I just left that as B and I got the dates. Probably the most, one of the most important aspects of updating. Uh, and this is going to be in GMT time. And I make sure that uh, it is pronounced in my update description. So. Um, these are probably the most important pieces over here, and we'll be using that in our very next step. Okay, so this is going to be the very final step. Uh, now that we already have all of our given statistics, we have our old description, and we have the video ID of those descriptions. We also have our video statistics, the likes, dislikes, the ratios, and we also have the same video IDs. So there's like a, like a primary key, if you want to think about it like that, that connects these two data sets together. I'm going to be using a customized um, function, merge metadata description, and that is coming from description parsing new. It's really simple. Uh, this is the very first line uh, and the only line that will be updated on your new description. And the only thing here is that, you know, it's just going to get the likes and the dislikes uh, from that given record over here. That record is going to be coming from a matching piece. So it's going to be reading the data from your given data frame. It has a video ID. If that video ID is equal to that um, video ID that is being iterated from, uh, it will just return that video ID and uh, get that specific record. Uh, so we have that one uh, with that one observation uh, that has you know each individual I guess column. Um, and then it just extracts it from there. We have the record likes and dislikes that we are going to be using in this case. Uh, so go ahead and you know pass it on through. We also have our old description, um, and then we're going to be editing this in. So the first thing that it checks in your old description is to see if there's five parallel bars. There's five parallel bars, then we'll just remove the very first line of your description, and then re-update that. Uh, with this new line over here, the edit line, and then it'll return your new description. Um, contrary, if your description does not have any five parallel bars at the very beginning of your description, it will just append or prepend uh, this edit line to your old description, and then it will just return your new description. So that's what that is doing there. In the end, it will just be getting those new descriptions, and it will be associating that with a given video ID here. And then we have that in a dictionary format. Next piece is like if you want to proceed going forward, uh, you just type in all caps yes, and then it'll just be doing the next authentication process, making sure that uh, you are who you say you are. And then we're gonna be doing a real quick demo on just the very first two videos. Uh, in fact, let's do like the first like three, the very like the first three videos to see how this description, this update uh, description on YouTube works. And let's actually look at that over here and these are just helper functions this is going to be like uh printing out the old and new and just compare and then you want to make sure that it is uh the uh, like the new description is what you want it to be and if you're 100 percent confident that all of your descriptions will be uh correctly updated and you don't want to check you can go ahead and comment this part out and i'll be doing that in the future but nonetheless let's go ahead and test that out so let's go ahead and run python migrate description formats I notice it just prints out my data frame and my number of videos I have going on. All caps, yes. Let's go ahead and authenticate this process. And this is going to be my second video. Let's go ahead and maximize this. This is old. Okay, sweet. So this is our old description over here. 
uh, and then this is where our new description is. So it pretty much is the exact same format as our previous description that we have going on over here. But the only thing that's different is that it just prepended this particular line. 13 likes, zero dislikes, 100% ratioed. And then it has that updated on the UTC format. And then it'll just do that for all of these, uh, for what, however many videos that you have and you are good to go. So if that looks all dandy to you, just go ahead and type in yes, and then your videos have been updated. So let's go ahead and go to YouTube. And over here, this is the updated uh, video description. So as we can see here, we have equal, equal likes. Uh, what well, we have, just, we just updated the first three. So let's go ahead and look at our very, very fine video that we have here. Let's pause that. And voila, we have it updated. Okay, so let's do this for all of our videos now and make sure that all of our videos are most up to date. So let's go ahead and uh, comment out these three lines, uh, probably because I already know that all my videos would be uh, correctly formatted. It's just gonna be prepending the line and I'm confident by my logic and the way that it looks. So comment that out and let's also comment this piece out. I'll probably delete it when I push it up to GitHub. Uh, but let's go ahead and run uh, Python migrate description and yes, and voila, I have it all authenticated. I got my video IDs that are currently being updated and just print out that description and let's just wait until all my videos have been updated. Okay, so everything has been updated. Let's go ahead and check out YouTube Studio. Let's go ahead and refresh this and that looks good to go. We have all of our descriptions that have been updated. We got our likes, dislikes, so looks like everything is okay. Yep, looks like everything is good. So let's go ahead and look at one dislike. Unfortunately, someone disliked my logistic regression, so let's take a look at that. We got nine, yeah, I don't see in my dislike, so one dislike over here. So everything looks dandy and good to go. Now, of course, there are some downsides. Uh, for one, you would have to trust my integrity that I'm not gonna be doing anything funky behind the scenes, which, um, and then hopefully YouTube can allow me to actually reveal what these likes and dislikes are going to be. And hopefully I don't get banned for doing that. So please, YouTube, don't ban me. Um, and then the other part is manually doing this. So in the future, I might do a cron job and just put the scripts on an AWS uh, type of an infrastructure and then just run that every like i don't know 9 a.m um, eastern or um utc time frame that sort of thing and that should not be much of an issue i mean the last concern is that uh when youtube removes this api the dislikes uh, will still be there for the creator otherwise i'd have to think of a different solution to scrape these likes and dislikes in order to you know successfully Put that under my descriptions over here and one of the really neat things actually uh let me yeah, pull up like one video um one of the neat things about this is that we don't have you can't really like i guess like physically tamper uh with the actual you know insertions of those specific comments um uh, so notice when i was like you know going into uh the description is not actually there so if i were to edit this description the description will change and it will actually remove said comment so it's everything's automated and if you edit anything um inside your description like physically you have to rerun the algorithm again to get the most recent statistic and if you made it this far in the video thank you so much for watching and i hope to see you in my next video